everyone, Dr. Brent Siebel back with you at Make It Happen here at Arizona State University, powered by the Ira A. Fulton Schools of Engineering, but we also have friends from all over the university outside of the academic enterprise tuning in to learn how to make an impact in the world. And I'm really excited to have my friend Allie Goldstein Norup here with us today. She and I met through our Venture Devils program. We run a meta cohort or a league of practicing entrepreneurs at ASU. And Allie is one of our go-to venture mentors working with a cadre of students and uh, alumni founders who are, are wanting to build uh, the future, quite literally. And Ali uh, is one of our best venture mentors in there in that um, cohort because she's been there, done that. And she's working with a lot of our computer science students in, in other capacities. So Ali, it's just so great to have you here and share your story with us as uh, hopefully an aspiration to these uh, students and audience members that really want to go out and affect change in the world. Uh, Brent, it is my pleasure. Um, as we as we talked about, I'm excited to be here. I figured I'd do what we normally do in Techstars. I'm currently the EIR, so Entrepreneur in Residence for FinTech at Techstars. Um, can talk to how I got there. It was both an entrepreneurial and an entrepreneurial type of way. Um, but what I really wanted to start off with is it's just really exciting for me. I, I was able to get my entrepreneurial journey starting about five years ago. But what I knew for sort of from that is I was always a kid who was interested in just doing more. I figured there was more time in the day. Um, my husband, my family say that I don't sit still very well. And so with that, I always really was looking for something that I could do additional to whatever was my job, my studies, whatever it may be. Um, this goes back all the way for me that I was the type of kid that graduated school in three years by figuring out how to make it so that all my credits for Northwestern went even faster. So let me take you back a couple of years and, and for the crowd here, I really want to hit upon you can be entrepreneurial in a lot of different ways. Um, part of what we're going to be talking about today is, is making decisions and being able to be agile in the moment. But more specifically, I think it's also one of the things that Brent and I have talked about a number of times is being able to hire fast and fire fast. So to that, let me get you to uh, sort of how I got it. So Northwestern undergrad got into uh, the arts and did a master's in arts administration at NYU, quickly got into the arts in New York City, which was fun and fast up until the financial crisis, used that as a time to pivot into working at universities came up the ranks at University of Chicago and NYU in fundraising and development. I knew for many of you that this was a, a really cool opportunity for me to be able to learn more. So I went and got my MBA at Stern while I was leading up a fundraising team for NYU. The way I knew how to do that and, and part of what I alluded to already at the beginning was finding those opportunities to just squeeze a little bit more out of my time or my day or find what, you know, in business school we talk about is synergy. More specifically, it's about efficiency and being able to find repeatable and scalable things that you can do over and over again. When I did that, um, I've done it all throughout my career and I'll give you a couple of examples. I knew that there was a possibility for me to do business school part-time while leading a team because the skills that I was gonna learn at that opportunity were really gonna build me into the next one. So I'm a big proponent of graduate school. It's part of the reason I got involved with ASU. Um, and Venture Devils in the first place was the ability to encourage people to really think about how they wanna be entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, start businesses in their own career. But let me rewind a little bit in my career. I said that I've been entrepreneurial and I was that kid that never <laughs> sat still very long or very well. Part of it is because I was constantly always looking at processes and thinking about how I could make them better. And the type of person that if there's a process or an operation or a strategy in front of me, I can sort of sometimes see where there's ways to do it. I take the pieces apart, put them back on a table, figure out how to do it, and then create a more cogent, efficient practice through it. It's a, something I picked up as a kid with puzzles and with math. Um, and in my entrepreneurial ways, I found ways to do that. And so all of the roles that I ever had in my early career, I was looking for that entrepreneurial type of activity towards it. I really wanted to be able to find those ways that I could squeeze a little bit more out of my workday. Um, trust me, this is not a 
17 hour workday that I'm talking about, but it's more specifically in looking at that extra half hour, what could I do to expand my job, understand my role, expand my knowledge, um, expand my skill set. And so I was constantly the person that I would build something in my role by there was something over in the corner that somebody wasn't doing that I was interested in or thought I might be interested in and just sort of brought it into my role. And so every role that I ever had leading up to business school, especially, it would come in like a role like this and progressively become bigger and bigger. So I'm the type of person that when you say to me, all right, let's go do something, I can figure out a way to take it on myself. I will find efficiency. I work very, very fast. Um, so you can see I get to um, I get to business school, I'm leading a team, I'm getting, I went from leading a team of about two people to about a team of eight all throughout the time while I'm getting my business school degree. And what I did was I walked into the career offices at Stern and said, I want to build something myself. I want to be using my background. I want to use the fact that I went to business school to learn out all of these skills with regards to finance, marketing, and strategy. And I want to build something. Um, what I wish they had said was go work for a startup. Um, and I can come back to that in a second. Instead, what they looked at my background, started in the arts, had worked with a lot of high net worth individuals, studied finance, and they said private wealth management, private banking, asset management, you'd be fantastic. Um, I backdoored my way into JP Morgan. Um, and when I say backdoored, I was a part-time student who managed to be able to go through the full-time process and, and get into the associate program there. JP Morgan, I will say, phenomenal company. If you ever get a chance, some of the smartest people on the street go and work there. It is a type of place where I could see, though, I couldn't be exactly how I wanted to be entrepreneurial or entrepreneurial. Um, and thankfully for me, I put together an event. We held it the summer of 2015 and got introduced to somebody at Techstars. Techstars, uh, I have gotten super involved with ever since that day. My co-founder of my first company was a Techstars mentor. We went through Techstars in 2018 in New York City. I sit on the Techstars chapter board, advisory board more specifically, and I'm the co-head of the New York City chapter, and I'm now the entrepreneur in residence for FinTech. The reason I've been able to do all of this is I applied the same sort of moving fast and expanding roles very specifically to be able to um, benefit and, and really utilize the network that came from it. So let's go back. I'm at JP Morgan. I'm about to leave. I'm thinking about what I want to do next. There's usually a joke that I say in here of the CRM system that I was using um, at the University of Chicago was a little bit better than what I was using prior to um, at JP Morgan still a phenomenal organization. And I saw that there was an opportunity in FinTech and, and wanted to get involved with that. So you can see a bit of an arc to it. Went and started talking to a bunch of people in the FinTech space. One of my co-founders for KPI Ready was interested in the space. We thought about crowdsourced venture capital and crowdsourced alternative assets. And we came up with what was the predecessor to KPI Ready and we got into Techstars New York City. Uh, CRM is definitely a customer, customer relationship management system. Thank you for that, by the way, Brent, I shouldn't use acronyms. Um, to that, it is an amazing opportunity to be able to be a startup um, and to be a business founder. At the same time, I bootstrapped another company with a co-founder who is a domain expert in privacy. We called it GDPR Simple. And for most of 2018, I worked incredibly hard on trying to build two companies from scratch best experiences I've ever had, but truly it was the experiences of getting involved with other types of entrepreneurial and business-minded um, organizations that such as ASU and Venture Devils that really allowed for me to build out my skill set and, and get me to the point that I am here today. I said one of the things related to that that I wanted to talk about was hiring fast and firing fast. Often when you're building out a team and you're resource strapped, you feel as though you have very little options on what you can do as a founder in a startup, um, or often you can feel the same way if you're working on a project inside a larger organization and you're being entrepreneurial. The biggest thing that we can do as founders and managers is be incredibly smart and diligent about our time, um, which may seem a little contradictory to everything I just said about myself, which is why I set it up that way. I am the type of person that will keep working because I can. Um, it is actually one of my um, greatest strengths and greatest weaknesses is I will find ways to just keep taking it on myself. Um, and so when it came to hiring out the rest of the team, 
for my first startup and actually for the bootstrap company that we worked on, it was hard for me to think about that. It was not the network that I had. Um, and often it seemed easier to just take on things myself. And so one of the things that I often say to people when they're working in these types of ways is somebody turned me on to the phrase of hire fast and fire fast. It's a startup type mantra. The thought process behind it is very specifically when you bring somebody onto your team, you can tell pretty quickly if they're going to be a good cultural fit. Um, you can also tell if they're going to be a good working fit for you. If you're a small team that's resource strapped, this is even more important than it is any, any other type of organization. And I'll give it in the sense of resource strapped can be the same way if you're working on something and you're part of a large organization and you're trying, don't have a full budget for it, or you're working on something that's major size. This type of thinking goes across both organizational types. When I say hire fast and fire fast, it's really important and I coach founders and, and managers all the time to think about what is the type of team you want to do? Is it the type of team that you know responds to emails at all hours of the night? Is it the type of team that goes hiking on the weekends together? Or is it something in between? It is yours to figure out, but know that when you specifically start to build that team out and you're hiring fast, fire fast, it's just as important to think about who you are as a manager as you do that. So let's go back to what I was saying. I'm specifically a type that will left my own devices, probably work as long as possible, as hard as possible. And that at an early stage startup usually can yield to a lot of things. However, it's gotta be something that other team members want to buy into. And if they don't, they're not the founder of the company. Um, and so they don't have as much skin in the game. And so I encourage everybody, especially as you think about the rest of my founder story, we had part-time people who were working with us. We had um, sweat equity. We had a number of different people, all of them who I'm incredibly thankful to for the journey that we went on together. But I can tell you stories of me running on a Saturday and slacking with the team, trying to get them into working on something that I wanted to work on later in the day, forgetting that it was a Saturday or vice versa, allowing people that had a specific thought process or culture that they wanted to impose on the team that was contrary to my own. And instead of sitting down and having a conversation with them, we let it fester. A lot of what really is meant by hire fast and fire fast is coming to a head and being direct with your fellow team members on how you want to build something. And once again, this can be entrepreneurial, it can be entrepreneurial. I will very specifically give this example that I was working on very recently in which I came into an organization, had, saw that there was a way that a sales and programmatic effort could be done and allowed, um, had to go directly to somebody in which I had a specific conflict with them. And I could have either hired or fired fast me or him in that regard. And instead we sat down, we had a conversation, we divided and conquered on how we went about things. And we aligned on the vision that we wanted to accomplish. We had different ways of how we were going to accomplish that vision, but we aligned on it very specifically. And so now we work quite closely. Um, I really think it's one of those things that as you're building your own company, whether that's just you, um, and we can make jokes about hiring or firing fast yourself, um, but whether you're building a company just yourself, you're building a team in inside of a larger organization, um, or you're on your own and you're working on something as a startup and building it into a point that others can come in, it's incredibly important to think about how you're going to create that culture create the way that you want to be having a company. It is yours to set. So we've covered a number of different things, entrepreneurial and entrepreneurial, working too hard, maybe not hard enough, depending on how you feel about it. Then realizing that that's going to have to be part of the thing that you have to think about for hiring fast and firing fast. Um, I want to go through a little bit more of my own entrepreneurial journey and how I got to be the entrepreneur in residence at Techstars and why I think how Techstars does a number of things just really aligns for me. Um, it's not because Techstars is from originally Boulder and I'm from Chicago originally and there's a Midwestern love, but it's more specifically on this mantra of give that first. Um, let me say that again, because it may have cut out slightly, give first. Um, I was taught at a very young age to say please and thank you, but more specifically that you give before you take. Um, when I got to Techstars, I realized that that was a mantra that went across the ecosystem, which includes, I believe now, something like 30 to 50 accelerators all across the globe, nearly 3,000 companies, and a number of founders passed that. Their 
on a phenomenal organization to be part of, but their mantra can go past. And especially when you're building a business, there's an opportunity for you to give first um, and then have somebody be able to give back to you in return. The reason I say this is built a company called KPI Ready. In doing that, we wanted to help founders align on their vision and be able to report out their metrics to their investors and the rest of their team. I can still do my elevator pitch from back in the day, but we wanted to get customer discovery incredibly rapidly in the startup space. And so I connected with one of my mentors and we figured out a way for me to go and do KPI workshops in what ended up being over a three year period of about 15 programs. Each program has 10 companies in it. That's 150 companies that I got exposed to over a period of time. There's even more companies that I mentored through ASU and several of the other networks that I know. But what we were really able to do and why I'm now more of a KPI expert than ever is because I was able to go in and specifically have those conversations with each of the founders at an early stage talking about their business. My goal and even a 20 minute conversation with a founder is to really understand their business, be able to regurgitate it back to them in a way that I understand and then be able to connect them into my network or the Techstars network as a whole. So I wanna to come to sort of a high level on how I think about things as it comes to sort of starting your own business, hiring fast and firing fast. I said that give first is something that I live by and I really truly do believe. Um, it also means that it does. if I give to you two times um, and you don't give in return, or specifically you don't realize that I'm giving to you, I will hire fire you fast pretty quickly. Um, and so to that, my mantra for the day, hire and fire fast, super important to learn, hard to execute upon, but it starts with you first. Living in an environment in which you can give first to others is incredibly important. Um, it's a mantra that I live for and I just happen to be wearing the sweatshirt for as well. Um, but it's something that I think is incredibly important when doing the entrepreneurial and entrepreneurial work that we all need to do. Your resource constraints, you have to be diligent about your time, so hiring and firing fast. But more specifically, you have to make something out of nothing. And the best way to be able to do that is to pull into and reach out to your network to have them be the extended to. And that could be if you're in an organization trying to build something matricized, or if you're a startup founder or a, a business owner trying to build their business from scratch. This is something that you can truly do by just asking a little bit after you've given a little bit to somebody else. So with that, I'm gonna open it up to questions. Brent, I hope I covered a number of things, um, but we'll see how we, I did otherwise. Love it. Thank you so much, Ali. The, yes, indeed, you did hit some fantastic uh, pro tips, Ali's pro tips. I'm going to create my own blog. I uh, hope you don't mind. Um, <laughs> Please go right ahead. Happy to co-write. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for, for your time. We're going to end the, the recorded session today and then pivot over to some live Q&A. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time, Allie.